When it comes to getting fast and consistent standing starts from a four wheel drive drag car, slipping the clutch is one of the keys. The problem with this is that particularly when you're making a lot of power and you have a twin or a triple plate clutch, for the driver to be able to consistently and reliably slip the clutch the same amount pass after pass, it's almost an impossibility. The reason we need to slip the clutch is with a four wheel drive drivetrain, there's a lot of grip available. And when we leave the line and sidestep the clutch, it's likely that the car is going to do one of two things. Either it's going to light up in wheel spin and the engine will end up on the rev limiter, which results in a lot of smoke but not a lot of forward momentum, or alternatively, the car's going to grip up and this is going to bog the engine down, bringing it off boost and making for a very slow pass. Bogging the engine down like this also puts an immense amount of stress on all of the drivetrain components and this is one of the reasons why a lot of four wheel drive drag cars have a reputation for reliability problems. For years, the worst kept secret among four wheel drive drag racers has been a clutch slipper device. Now this is a valve that goes in the clutch line between the clutch master cylinder and the clutch slave cylinder. The idea here is that the driver will manually disengage the clutch by pushing down on the clutch pedal, but that little valve will restrict how quickly the clutch can release when the driver sidesteps the clutch. In more advanced systems, the speed of release can actually be adjusted to suit the track conditions or the amount of grip available. With one of these systems in use, the driver will stage the car normally, but then as the tree counts down and the driver sidesteps the clutch, the clutch may take as long as one and a half to two seconds to fully come back out and fully engage. So this allows the clutch to slip, particularly over that critical period, the first 20 to 30 feet of the launch. Now you may be thinking that that's all well and good as the driver steps off the clutch at the start line, but of course if you need to use the clutch as you go down the strip, this isn't going to be much use. That very slow clutch response when we shift from first to second to third, etc., that's going to really make the clutch slip and really hamper the car's time. Well, that's okay, there's ways around this too. First of all, with a lot of the high performance drag cars, they will be running what's referred to as a dog engagement gearbox. And these gearboxes, once the car leaves the line, don't actually require the clutch to be used for the gear shift. This is all done through the ECU, and all the driver needs to do is pull on the gear lever. The ECU will interrupt the engine torque, allowing the shift to progress. So in this instance, the clutch really doesn't matter once the car leaves the line. However, if you're running a conventional synchromesh box where we do need the clutch for each of the changes, then there's ways around this too. Some of the devices, such as the unit from Magnus Motorsport, can be set up with a bypass. Now, depending how you set this up, this could be done based on speed, so that once the car exceeds perhaps 20 or 30 mile an hour in first gear, the clutch system is disabled, and then you can use the clutch as normal. The big downside with these clutch slipper units though is because we are purposely generating so much slip in the clutch unit, the clutch will create a lot of heat and it will wear very quickly. In some instances a complete triple plate clutch may only last 8 to 10 passes before it needs to be replaced. If you liked that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.